Yeah. Awesome. Start on the back. <laughs> I lost control of this right. class. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, there. I was going to say, Jennifer, I can host this one and you can go do your stuff. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. I'm going to try to leave and not break it. <laughs> <laughs> Find your mat, just taking that moment to check into the breath, allowing it to, in, to lengthen, to slow, and to just really start noticing the way each inhale and exhale feels. And with your next breath, we're just gonna go ahead and find your wind removing pose on the right. So drawing the right knee towards the shoulder. And then you're just gonna take it across the body towards the left. And then we're coming right back towards center. We're gonna hug that knee in one more time and go ahead and switch over to the left. So pulling that knee towards the shoulder, really flexing through the feet, finding that length in your wind, removing those. And then taking the knee across the body towards the right. And then we're taking it back towards center, hugging that knee in. The right knee is gonna come meet the left, just taking a quick second to rock side to side, release tension in the low back. And then with that next breath, we're going to take the arms overhead, interlacing the fingers, leaving the pointer finger extended, and then take the legs straight up. First, enjoying a couple breaths in a waterfall. And then in that next breath, you're going to flex the toes towards the face and start to slowly lower the heels towards your mat. Inhaling to draw them back up, and we're going to move through those leg lifts seven more times. So, working with your breath, controlling how fast or slow you choose to move. Or with that exhale, inhale to lift. Five. Six, seven, and last one as you exhale the heels lower for eight. Inhale, they come back up. You're going to draw both knees in towards the chest, just taking a quick second, rocking side to side, releasing any tension in the spine. And then we're going to make our way up into your tabletop. and starting to move through your cat and your cow. So as you inhale, crown the head and the tailbone lift. Exhale to arch up and in. Just moving through that arching and curving of your spine. And with those next couple breaths, we're just going to start to extend the right leg out. And 
And in your next breath, we're gonna to start to roll open. Starting to reach forward with the right hand, so you're one long line. And then elbow and knee are gonna meet. So elbow and knee meet. Coming out long, we're only gonna move through five of these. And after that fifth one, we're gonna find that line. We're gonna try to hold it as you rotate down so the body is parallel towards the mat. Nice. And then you're gonna bend the back knee, reach back with the right hand. See if you can't find your bow. And if you need to restack to find balance here, feel free to do so. When you're parallel, you're relying a little bit more on core. And after you feel like you've gotten a nice fat bend here, we'll meet back in center. Moving through that cat and cow. And then we're gonna take the left leg out. Left arm lifts, rolling open, so finding that nice long line first. And then we're going to move through our five crunches, so elbow to knee, coming out long, two, three, four, and five. And after that fifth one, you might take your bow from here, or you might rotate the shoulders and the hips down and take it with the torso parallel to your mat. Just sort of depends on what level of work you feel like doing right now. And then as you release, we're just gonna come back towards center, move through that cat and cow, and then tuck the toes, taking it up to your first down dog. Right. And then that next breath, you're gonna start to, hold on. You're gonna start to bring the feet towards the hands. Moving into your forward fold. And maybe you're a rag doll. Maybe you're clasping opposite elbows. <clears throat> but just really starting to find that length. And then as you inhale, arms are gonna come up overhead. Inhale, hands will come into heart center. And then starting to make our way through a vinyasa. So inhaling, arms rise. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, and then exhaling to move through your plank and chaturanga. Inhaling into your up dog or cobra, and then taking it back to that down dog for five breaths. And in that next breath, we're gonna make our way towards the top of the mat. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, arms are coming up overhead. Exhale, hands come into our center. We're gonna move through a second slant A, so arms are rising. Exhaling towards your mat. Inhaling into your flat back. 
Exhaling back through plank and chaturanga. Into your up dog or cobra. And then whenever you're ready, moving back to down dog. And you grab your five breaths here. And we're taking it back towards the top of your mat. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling to fold. Arms are coming up overhead. Hands come into heart center. Last traditional A before we start to build our flow. Arms are going up. Exhaling towards your mat. Finding your flat back. And then moving through your vinyasa. So it might just be a chaturanga. It might be two chaturangas. Whatever you need. Maybe you hang out your back bend or your up dog for just a little bit. Maybe you're taking it all the way back to down dog. But again, we've always got those couple of breaths here. And then we're taking it back towards the top of the mat. So inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling, arms come up overhead. Exhale, hands come into heart center. I'm trying to have a, got my Zoom conference call for work up in the background here so they don't think oh, no. not there. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's fine. They're just talking about how we need to be selling gift cards. So. I just have to actually, I just need my boss to see my phone numbers connected so she doesn't get upset with me. <laughs> I was going to say, man, do what you got to do. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't get fired because of us. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, <laughs> cool. And so we're going to sit back in our chair. Hands are coming back to heart center, and we're gonna find our little twist. So towards the right, really pressing through that bottom elbow. Back towards center, to the left. From here, we're gonna to come towards center one more time. And we're going to see if we can't take the right leg up and pop directly into a figure four. Nice. Then you're going to really press through that standing foot to make your way towards standing. Nice. We're going to shift this right foot to the inner thigh, so moving into our traditional tree. And then from here, we're going to really engage the core, really try to get a solid foundation in that left foot as we bring the right foot forward. Pass through warrior three for a quick breath and then land in a crescent. Nice. From crescent, we're gonna open out to warrior two. And we're gonna find some movement in our warrior two doing five waterfalls. So as you exhale, starting to find your reverse. Inhale out long, going back for two. Three. So really finding length in that side body. Four. And our fifth one will really hold our reverse. Then as you exhale, start to pull forward through that hand, letting the right hand and the left hand settle to the inside of the left leg. 
So you're really trying to line that leg as you twist open. And since we're getting our balance in early so that we don't have to worry about any tired legs and stuff, we're gonna go ahead and take this left hand. We're gonna take it in front of your left foot. You're gonna once again start to think about transferring that weight as you find a half moon. And when you're ready, we're just gonna let the right foot and hand come towards the mat. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale into a fold. With that next breath, hands plant. We're gonna step or hop back to your plank. Start to lower through your chaturanga. Into up dog or cobra. Take it back to down dog. Enjoy a couple of breaths here. And in your next breath, we're taking it back towards the hands. Inhaling flat back. Exhaling to fold. Inhale, arms come up as you sit back in your chair. Hands are coming to heart center and you're taking that twist. So the left elbow comes to the outside, or the right elbow comes to the outside of the left knee. From here, we're gonna come back towards center. See if we can't start to hover that right foot. Extend out to your warrior three for a breath. And then step back, finding a crescent. Nice control. From crescent, opening out warrior two. Dropping back into your reverse, coming back out to warrior two, dropping for the second time, three, four, and with this one, we're going to hold that reverse. Then exhale on down in. Breathe the left hand, the inside of the left foot, starting to roll open. And from here, we're finishing our balance. So this left hand comes in front of the left foot. Ooh, see if you can't find your half moon. And when you're ready, we're just going to clasp on down, inhaling into your flat back, exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, arms come up, exhale, hands come into heart center. I just realized that I accidentally ran you guys through the same side twice, which is good because that means we're done with that side completely, but we have to get this next side twice. So, yep, this time, we put, we, from our chair, the left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. We came back towards center. That's where I got us backwards. I actually left out our figure four. Yeah. Which foot? So your four. left, left. Your got left foot is figure four over your right knee because we're trying to get that lunge on the right side. Okay, I got it. I knew it felt like I left out something last time. <laughs> So whenever you're ready, we're gonna try to pass through that warrior three. One quick breath as you find your crescent. You're twisting open to warrior two. And 
then we have our five waterfalls. So dropping back, warrior two, dropping back, coming long, three, four, and on this fifth one, we hold it. And we're coming out to that side angle triangle little hybrid where we bring the right hand to the inside of the right leg, try to twist that top left shoulder open. And then from here, shimmying that right hand in front of the right foot, transferring your weight into the right foot, finding your half moon. And then from there, we're coming back towards center, finding your forward fold, inhaling into your flat back, exhaling back down, inhale, arms come up overhead, exhale, hands are coming into heart center. Now we're gonna get those sides even. So once again, we're using the right leg as our balance. Our left leg is coming up into that figure four. From here, we're moving back into that full variation of tree. Passing through your warrior three to find your crescent. Nice, nice control. We've got five breaths in crescent. Opening out to your warrior two. Got our little bit of movement here as you go back, come long, back, come long, three, four, and five. After that fifth one, we're coming all the way down, opening through this left body. And then taking it on up into your half moon. And it's okay if it's not a super seamless transition. Maybe it is. Then that next breath, we're just gonna find our forward fold. This time we are gonna take the hands behind the back, starting to clasp them, rolling the shoulders open, letting the arms fall forward. And then as you inhale, we'll make our way back up, release the arms up overhead, exhaling to fold. Inhaling flat back, exhale through your vinyasa, so plank and chaturanga, up dog cobra, back to down dog, and just pedaling through the heels here, really noticing whether or not the back little legs have opened. And then the right leg's gonna come up. You're gonna go ahead and bend that top knee, letting the hips sat, rolling that knee out. And then from here, we're gonna step to the outside of the right hand. So you're in a dragon lunge here. From here, we're gonna to start to keep the left hand lift down, right arm lifts, trying to pull the torso as close into the right knee as you can. And 
And then from here, we're gonna cut settle back in. We're gonna go ahead and drop the back knee. Let the toes come long. And then the left, right toes and the right knee are gonna angle towards that top right corner of your mat. You're gonna start to pull forward through the hips just a little bit. Let toes and knee drop open as you start to twist over that leg. Maybe you stay here in your lizard variation. Maybe you kick the back left foot up and grab it with the right hand. From here, we're gonna release all that. Coming back through center, we're gonna heel toe this foot across the mat. The knee drops open. This foot might, this leg might be parallel to the top of the mat. It might come in, whatever feels better in your body. Really reaching out through the back left toes to find some length. Inhaling here and exhaling to fold into your pigeon. We're not gonna be here for super long. And then from your pigeon, we're gonna inhale back up onto hands and knees. You're gonna start to rock onto that right hip, just so that you have a little bit more stability. The hands are coming to the back of the head. And we're gonna do five pigeon like sit-ups as you exhale, taking it towards the mat. Inhaling back up. Nice. Two pigeon push-ups. <laughs> Three, four, and last one, five. Once you come back up, we're going to release the hands. We're going to swing this back left leg around to find the right foot. As you inhale, the arms will come up. Exhale, we're going to twist and fold into that lateral ajani. that next breath, inhaling to make your way up. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead and plant the hands, swing the back left foot around, plug in those toes. Nice. Right foot's gonna meet the left, so you're in a high plank. And from high plank, we're gonna play with those little things that we did yesterday. So the right leg's gonna lift. You're gonna take it to the inside of the right elbow, take it back, outside of the right elbow, back to plank, inside left, plank, outside left, plank, chaturanga, up dog cobra, back to down dog. We've got a couple breaths here just to reset before we hit the left. Left leg's taking it up, stacking the hips, circling the knee, doing whatever you need to wake that leg up. Bring a little movement into the hip. And when you're ready, we're gonna let the left hand step to the outside, or the left foot, step to the outside of both of those hands. Plugging in those back right toes, so you're really enjoying that lizard moment here. And then we're gonna drop the back knee, toes come long. Left toes and knee angle towards that left corner. And then you're gonna start to twist over the left knee. And maybe you just grab that bind behind you, left hand to right foot. From our twist, we're gonna take it into your pigeon. So starting to release, heel toeing across, knee drops open, toes reach for your length, finding 
uh, some extension through the spine and then folding. We're only here for about five breaths, just like we would any other posture. And with your fifth breath, we're gonna come up onto the hands, rock over onto that left hip so that you have some stability there for your sit-ups. Hands come to the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> you got Cat's like, it's all about me right now. <laughs> Three, four, and five. After that fifth one, we're going to release the hands, swing this leg around to get that lateral janu, help release the, out the left hip from your pigeon. In that next breath, we're coming up and we're starting to make our way back into plank. So the right leg swings around, toes plug in, left foot meets it back there. We've got our little plank elbow tap, so the left leg's gonna hover. We're gonna take it to the outside of left elbow, shoot it back, inside of left, shoot it back, right, outside right. And then once you've done your little taps, we'll move through your vinyasa. And just taking this moment here to lengthen through the spine. Find any free form movement that you may need. And then we're going to take it back towards the top of the mat. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, arms are going to come up overhead. Exhale, hands are going to come into heart center. We're going to take that right leg, step it back so you're lined up on the long edge of your mat. Start it first with toes slightly uh, pigeon toed in. Inhaling for length, exhaling into your favorite forward fold. If you like to take tripod here and you like to take tripod, feel free to. And then as you inhale, you're just going to press, let the hands come to the mat, press up to find your flat back. And then you're going to turn the right toes towards the back of the mat and just sort of army or just sort of crawl the hands around until you're, until both hands are framing that right foot. You're in a really wide variation of triangle here, I mean a pyramid here. You might stay here. You might think about pulling that left hip forward. If it makes you come onto those back left toes, that's totally fine. It sort of gives you an opportunity to move as slow as slightly deeper into the posture. And then from here, we're just gonna step both hands forward. You're probably gonna end up putting a slight bend in the right knee. And you're going to step up into your standing splits. And from here, we're going to do eight curtsy or eight kundalini squats. So the knee bends. As you exhale, you're going to bend the front knee, letting the both knees kiss behind you. Coming back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. After that eighth one, finding your line whenever you're ready, landing that foot back down. We'll walk the hands back around towards center. Inhale into your flat back. 
Exhale to find a fold, just to release that low back. And in that next breath, we're gonna start to crawl towards the left side, letting the left toes come to the front end of your mat. Hands are framing it. Maybe you keep this wide pyramid stance. Maybe you adjust your feet. And with your next exhale, we're gonna relocate the hands just a little in front of the feet so that you can more easily transition into your standing split. And we have our eight little curtsy squats. So the knee bends, exhale as they bend and find each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. After that eighth one, we're gonna land that left, the right foot back, crawl towards center again. Grab another release here. We'll spend five breaths here instead of just a quick one. So if you wanna take a crow, if you want to, uh, again, hop into a quick tripod, whatever you're feeling like this morning. And then once again, we're gonna take the trip to the back of the mat. So the right toes are turning out. You're gonna walk the hands so they're both to the inside of the right foot. And then you're gonna slowly start to open the left arm into your triangle. If you need to come up the leg or anything to really find your triangle, feel free to. So last big thing we're gonna play with with balance today, because we've been doing a lot of it, is you're gonna try to keep your hand grabbing onto that, left, that uh, right foot. You're gonna start to transfer the weight into the right foot and see if you can find your half moon with the right hand floating. If you need to take it to the mat, feel free to do so. I personally tend to find this posture just a little bit better with my right hand bound to that right leg instead of floating, but to each their own. And we're gonna come up, pivot the, left, the right toes in, take the left toes out. If you wanna take your pyramid from the ground up, feel free. If you'd rather pull through the fingertips, I find it personally a little bit more accessible to come into it from standing. I don't have to do as much adjustments, as many adjustments once I find my five breaths. <clears throat> and from here, we're gonna see if we can't find that balance to so see if you can either, you either wanna hover the left hand or keep it bound to the left leg as you transfer your weight and open into a half moon Nice. In our fifth breath, we'll land out wide. This time, we're gonna bring the heels in together, toes out wide, arms are gonna come up into both those arms as you sit down into your goddess pose. And from goddess, we're gonna do five big, five of these little, little guys. So you're gonna tap right, come to center, tiptoe, back down, tap left, tiptoe, back down, tap right, two, up, down, left, up, down, right, three, 
Coming towards center, getting on the tiptoes, releasing, left, back up, finding your tiptoes, down, four, up, down, left, up, down, last one, five, center, tiptoes, left, tiptoes, come all the way up into your five point star. Maybe you grab a little bit of a back bend here. Exhaling into a full. Kind of find some free form movement here, whatever you need. And we're just gonna walk the hands back towards the front of the mat. Step that left foot back to meet the right foot and move through a vinyasa. Taking it back to your down dog. Once again, maybe the heels need to be pedaled out. Maybe you feel nice and lengthened after all that flowing. And then that next breath, we're just gonna try to hop the feet through to seated. We're gonna take the legs out long. And then from here, Really start to pull the toes back towards the uh, torso. Engage the calves, engage the top of the kneecaps. Try to engage the quads, get the low core. See if you can roll the shoulders down the back so they plant somewhere next to you. And maybe you slightly engage the chin. So we're trying to get all of those bandhas or energy locks engaged for a quick moment in your stack pose. And then as you inhale, arms are gonna come up. Exhale as you fold towards the toes. Inhaling, we're coming back up. We're gonna slide the hands all the way back so the fingertips are pointed back to the, towards the hips. Start to zip up the legs like a cobra tail. Go ahead and point your toes. I like to go ahead and start rolling my shoulders open here as you inhale into your reverse plank. After our fifth breath, we're going to lower the hips. Nice. We're gonna bring the hands back forward so they're set next to the hips, kind of like our staff pose arms were. Really engage the core. We're gonna lift the right foot, hold it for three breaths. Nice, exhale, lower it. We're gonna get that left up. Lower it. Right's coming up again. We're gonna hold it for five this time. Exhaling to lower it, we're gonna get that left. Last breath. I personally here need to move my hands forward just a little bit more. Really press through the hands, engage the core. We're gonna try to lift both heels for three breaths. Nice, lowering those heels. Leaving the left foot out long, right foot's gonna find that inner thigh. Inhale for some length, exhale as you fold. So finding that Janu A. And so from that Janu A, we're gonna play around finding a twist variation like we would normally take from lateral. We're going to go ahead and stay down. You're going to shimmy the left arm in front of that leg. And you're going to see if you can twist that hand back and grab the front of your foot. So you're going to be grabbing about the arch of your foot. This is also going to start to create more rotation in your wrist and elbows. From here, we're going to try to start to open. 
And even if you can't find that opening, you might go ahead and start to feel what it's like to take that top right hand, to grab the outside of the left foot. You can always stay folded down like this, like you were in a traditional Janu, just with the crossed arms. Or you can roll into that opening that we take in the lateral variation here. Yeah, we're doing that over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get out of that Janu and we're gonna switch it up. So right side, left leg comes in, start one first, his arms come overhead. Holding towards your toes. And so from here, we're going to start to again start playing around with just finding, we're more focused on finding the range of mo motion in the arms and the twist. So the right arm comes to the inside of that right leg. It might be down by the foot, it might be up. Either way, you're gonna to try to think about rotating that palm. So if you're just lining the leg, you're just gonna to start to turn the palm towards facing the leg, or you might be able to grab that foot. The left arm's coming around, grabbing the outside of the foot. You can always just stay here, folded with your flat back, up. You might start to twist. And we're going to come back towards center on letting all that go. We'll keep the left leg bent, let the right foot find it. Inhaling for your leap, exhaling into your butterfly. Inhale, we're making our way back up. We're going to keep our butterfly leg as you take the right hand behind the right hip, let the left hand pump the outside of the right knee. Inhale to find some leap. Exhale to twist. And that next breath, as you exhale, we're going to take it all the way around to the left. <laughs> and then from here, we're coming back towards center. We're going to rotate the knees up. Start to bring them into the chest as you make your way down. Oh, boys, let's go potty. As you make your way onto the back, Come yoga. they're getting their down dogs in. And from our <laughs> come on, Molly, you gotta go potty too. Oh, come on. We're gonna start to walk. find our back bends. So just kind of rocking side to side first to release the low back. The legs are gonna go straight up, finding further release in that back. And then we're going to take feet down towards the mat in line with the sitting bones close with them. Palms are down by the side. Inhaling at the bottom, exhaling to lift the hips. We're going to roll the shoulders underneath the body, letting the hands clasp. <laughs> and then from here, we're going to find those little kicks, some of those little kicks that we played with yesterday. So you're going to, instead of coming out to the toes, we'll keep the legs grounded. We're going to take the right leg up, back down, left leg up, back down. We'll do that seven more times. So two, left, three, four, five, six, Last two, seven, and eight. After eight, we're gonna release down towards the mat. Grab your counter pose of choice. 
So it might be when she's wet her knees. You might need a deeper release, drawing the knees into the chest. Whatever you want. And then we're going to take two more back bends. Yogi's choice. Maybe they are some wheels. Maybe they are bridges. Maybe you're continuing to do work inside of a bridge or a wheel. It is totally up to you. But we're going to, if you are going into another bridge, heels are in close to the sitting bones. Align with them, palms are down by the side as you press through the feet to lift the hips. Roll the shoulders beneath the back. And we're here for eight breaths. So playing how you want, being still, being find as much motion as you want. Maybe you don't take eight breaths. After your eight breaths, finding whatever your favorite counter pose is. And in those next couple breaths, kind of making a decision about what your final back bend is going to be or not be. Again, totally up to you. I'm going to just stick with bridges today, but if you want a wheel, they both start in the same way with the feet, heels aligned and close to sitting bones, bridges palms are down by your hand, sides, wheels, hands are up near the ears with the fingertips pointed back towards the shoulders, inhaling at the bottom, exhaling as we find whatever back bend you choose. And finding, just trying to find some sort of moment of release here. And then whenever you're ready, sort of take the hips back down towards the mat, finding your counter pose of choice. Before we move into our back bends, we'll go ahead and take, I mean our inversions, we'll go ahead and take a little bit of a twist. So that can also feel super nice here. Arms are coming out wide or into a T. The side body is nice and open, so we'll go ahead and cross the right leg over the left. And then both sets of knees will drop open towards the right. The gaze might even be able to go out left. From here, we're going to bring the legs back towards center, switch that cross, so right foot grounds, left leg crosses right, drop towards the left, maybe take the gaze towards the right. Here, coming back towards center. We're going to uncross the legs. Palms are coming down by the side, pressed into the mat once again. You might take the legs straight up here, hang out in the waterfall. You might rock the hips up and back into your shoulder stand. Maybe you've got a handstand or a headstand or a forearm stand. But you've got 10 breaths upside down. Back 
after your 10th breath. We'll start to make our way down towards the back. And then from here, starting to make our way into some closing postures. So starting by drawing the right knee up and in, just assessing how it feels in comparison to where you were short about an hour ago. And from here, we're going to draw that leg across the body. You might find that it feels good to extend the leg this time instead of having the bent knee. You might notice that moves into a slightly different area of the hip. We're going to come on back towards center. Hug that knee in, let it come long. Draw the left knee up and in, pulling away from the rib cage. Then we're taking the leg across the body towards the right. Maybe you keep the knee bent, maybe you extend it. It's very normal for these two sides to feel incredibly different. Our hips and shoulders tend to carry the most of our imbalances between the sides, barring um, whatever injuries we've accumulated along the way. When you're ready, we're gonna come back towards center. Take both knees into the chest, rock side to side. Start finding any release and or last movements that you need here. We're gonna to start to make our way towards Shavasana. As you settle into that shavasana, starting to notice the quality of the breath, allowing it to start returning towards your more normal and natural breath cycles. I know that we traditionally think of Shavasana is on the back. Sometimes that is not the most restful. If you have any tension in the low back, you might ground both feet on the mat and just let the knees fall into each other. It'll ground that little arch in your spine.
And with those next couple breaths, starting to let small movements return to the body. Turning in fingers and toes. Moving into wrists and ankles. And then at your own pace, and in your favorite way, starting to make your way back up to seated. And then as you inhale, arms will come up. Exhale, hands will come in. Thank you guys so much for all of your patience and good attitudes today. Hope everyone has an awesome afternoon. Of course, the cat just now decides that she wants to make her debut. <laughs> today. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I hope everyone has an awesome afternoon. Namaste.